Brewster, Rooster. Brewster was a young rooster. He lived with 15 hens on a small farm in a beautiful meadow. The hens loved their home very much, but Brewster loved it best of all. He loved the perfume from the pink roses that climbed the stairs of the chicken coop. He loved to strut in and out of the dandelions that grew beside the bubbling stream. And he loved the farmer who tended to all the animals and kept the farm tidy. Early one morning, Brewster noticed he was growing new tail feathers. He wanted the hens to admire him, so he decided to peep extra loud. He stretched his neck, puffed out his chest, and said, gargle, chugle, choo. Brewster was astonished. That wasn't a peep. Was that magnificent sound really coming from him? He tried again. Chargle, gurgle, doo. The entire farmyard seemed to wake up. The cows mooed, the horses neighed, the dog barked, and the hens began to cackle. Cock-a-doodle-doo! The farmer came out of the farmhouse, stretching and yawning. Well done, he said. Soon it'll be your job to wake me up every day. Brewster was thrilled. This was the most important job on the farm. All day he practiced until his crow was perfect. Cock-a-doodle-doo, he sang as loud as he could. On his way in for supper, the farmer smiled at Brewster and said, take a rest now, you'll keep the whole neighborhood awake. But Brewster didn't want to rest. Instead, he fluttered up to the top of the haystack and from there to the very peak of the chicken coop roof. His voice rang out in all directions again and again. By the time the sun set, Brewster was trying different crowing patterns. Cock-a-doodle-doo-doo, doodly-cockly-doo-doo. Cock-a-doodle-doodle-doo, doo-doo-cockly-doo-doo. All through the night, he crowed on and on and on and on until the farmer blurry-eyed rushed out of the farmhouse and yelled, enough. You kept me awake all night with that crazy racket. He stamped his foot. For the first time in hours, Brewster stopped crowing and stared down at the farmer. The farmer shook his fist high in the air. You're going into my soup pot, he shouted. Brewster was so frightened, he pretended he was a weather vane. The farmer, shaking his head, left to do his chores. Brewster decided that if he did not want to be made into soup, the safest thing would to be would to stay right there on the roof. He kept his eyes on the farmer until he saw a chance to escape. So Brewster watched all morning as the farmer collected the eggs, cleaned the chicken coop, and cleared a patch of ground to plant corn. And he watched all afternoon as the farmer piled twigs and brush into a huge mound on the grassy banks beside the stream. Brewster was still watching when the farmer went in for the night. The sky had grown dark and rain was falling. Poor Brewster had spent the whole day on the roof with nothing to eat. His tummy felt hollow. He was soaking wet. He gazed down longly at the chicken coop, but then he thought about being made into soup. He had to run away. Brewster jumped down from the roof in the dark, wet yard. He decided to follow the stream. He was bound to find another home. But as he crossed the farmyard, he sank deeper and deeper and deeper into the mud. Suddenly, he saw water rushing towards the barn and the chicken coop. The brush and twigs had washed down the bank. The stream was damaged. All the animals were in danger. Cock-a-doodle-doo! Brewster turned back. He still had time to escape, but first he must try to save the hens. He jumped onto the woodpile, took a deep breath, and crowed louder than ever before, again and again and again. Cock-a-doodle-doo! Cock-a-doodle-doo! His throat hurt, his lungs felt as they would burst, but he still crowed. Cock-a-doodle-doo! At 
last the cows mooed, the horse neighed, the dog barked, and the hens began to cackle. The farmer, wearing his pajamas, came rushing outside. Where's my axe? he cried. Brewster's feet were glued to the spot. The farmer was running right to him, but the farmer didn't reach for Brewster. He just grabbed his axe and kept on running straight to the stream. Now was the time to escape, but Brewster had used the last of his strength. He was too weak to run away. Besides, the water had reached the woodpile. There was no place to go. Exhausted, Brewster collapsed. He could hear the farmer's axe cutting away at the dam. The farm and the hens would be saved. This was all that mattered. When the stream was cleared and the farmer returned to the farmyard and went to where Brewster lay, gently he picked up the soaking wet heap of feathers and hurried him into the kitchen. When Brewster opened his eyes, he found himself in a cardboard box with a hot water bottle on each side. The farmer was standing over him smiling. You saved the farm, he said, and he held out a handful of grain. To make sure he wasn't dreaming, Brewster gave a little cock-a-doodle-doo. That's a good sign, said the farmer, still smiling. He opened the kitchen door. Instead of rain, sunlight poured in. Brewster walked slowly out into the sunshine. Fifteen proud hens came running over to where he stood, gazing around his beloved farm. cock a doodle -doo. Then Brewster puffed out his chest, further than ever before, and crowed, cock-a-doodle-doo. 